So I'm starting recording, <coughs> and uh, let us go back to the previous presentation, which is setting up. Uh, yeah, in this only, I have to go to previous slides. So the, the theoretically, what you need to understand is uh, high availability um, and does not require second in and nodes. It has to have active and passive name nodes. It should have journal nodes. It requires a bookkeeper service, and also it has to re it requires a failover controller service. Uh, that is not part of this slide. I have to update that slide. So we have to configure all those things to make it highly available. Okay, and the architecture will look like this. Uh, the journal nodes will maintain uh, that uh, edit logs. Uh, on the local disk, and it will, it will, um, uh, these general nodes also will be responsible to push the edit loss to the path to a standby name node, and it will be applied in real time so that if name node goes down, uh, we, uh, it can automatically fail over to path to, na path to name node uh, and make it active, and it can uh, uh, continue with the minimum, uh, uh, minimum impact on the cluster. Okay? So, yeah, last time, it failed uh, uh, because uh, when I when I started configuring the services, I started with HDFS directly, okay. And when we try to configure uh, uh, Zookeeper and the high availability, as the HDFS is started without Zookeeper, it failed, okay. Now I have already configured high availability on this. So if you click on HDFS and if you click on HDFS. You can see that uh, instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, name node and the secondary name node, you see name node active and name node standby, and also you can uh, see three journal nodes and two failover controllers. So all these things have to be configured to make it highly available. Okay, so let me demonstrate on uh, one of the clusters in our lab. Okay, so VM zero two four zero seven seven one eight zero. Okay, so now let us try setting up high availability here. Right. Okay, and you can click on instances. And you can click on Enable High Availability. You can leave the default name. You should, in production, you should name it is uh, name it more uh, uh, appropriately. And in this case, let me make it three and four as uh, active and passive. And the journal nodes, I want to make two, three, and four. Okay. So you can hit continue, and then we can say slash DFS slash JJ, JM. Click on continue. So this is the issue which we ran into, okay? So to fix this, so you also might lead into the same thing. Uh, because uh, you might end up creating HCFS before Zookeeper, and, uh, uh, and then if you try to set up the high availability, you can run into the same issue. 
So to uh, uh, to uh, to overcome that, you have to delete all the services, one after the other, and then you have to start from scratch. So when you actually delete the services, it will it will be only soft delete. It will not actually uh, delete any data or anything physically from the servers. It is just a soft delete. So you can stop <coughs> you can stop all, all the stuff on this, and then you can delete all the services one after the other. And then you have to start from the scratch. Okay, it will take a while to delete uh, to stop there. So the, uh, while it is deleting, let me explain you uh, uh, an important spreadsheet, which is part of the uh, Google Sheet. Uh, I sent the link uh, yesterday as well. So uh, this will have the uh, high-level instructions of, uh, and also the order in which you should uh, set up your cluster. Okay. So the first thing is you should install, uh, you should set up MySQL database. So depending upon the host uh, assigned to you, you can change the host ID, uh, uh, you, uh, and then you can uh, follow the task. So VM02, let's say you, you want to set up the cluster on host level. You can uh, set up MySQL database on VM0 to host 11, and then install Cloudera Manager from VM0 to host 11. You can go to this location and uh, uh, run this command. And uh, then uh, it will automatically, uh, uh, once the installation is done, you, you have to go to this uh, URL. Uh, so as it is the host 11, it should be HTTP colon slash slash VM0 to host 11 colon 7180. And then you have to use the wizard, uh, view all the hosts. The host for VM0, uh, uh, VM yeah, let me update that one also. VM0, 3, 2, sorry, 2 to 7, you want to install on all. So you can give this in the uh, instead of giving all the IP addresses, individual IP addresses, you can give the patterns also. So you can just replace the SX with 11. And then uh, uh, once you click next, next, uh, where you have to select the uh, parcel or repository, you should select the custom repository, and you, you have to choose package uh, uh, um, and then custom repository. And uh, uh, once you uh, select custom repository on CDH, uh, you, it will open up a text box, and you have to enter this over there. And then uh, uh, for Cloud Data Manager agent also, uh, you have to select the custom repository, and it will open up two, bo uh, two text boxes. In the first text box, you have to give this one. In the second text box, you have to give this one. And then once you click next, 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 it will install uh, everything. So once the installation is done, now comes adding the services. First, you have to add the Cloud Data Management Service on VM0 to host XX. So in this case, VM0 to host level will have the Cloud Data Management Service. Then you have to do the zookeeper. Then you can add uh, typical uh, HDFS service with name node, secondary name node, and data nodes following the, uh, these host names. And then you should validate and run HDFS commands and make sure everything is running fine. Then you should enable high availability uh, by uh, specifying 2 to 4 host set demo nodes and 3 and 4 as active patch nodes. Uh, then you you look into coset.xml and hdfs.xml to review the parameter files. And then you should go to map, reduce, yarn, etc. So this one will be a high level talk uh, which you need to follow while setting up the cluster. Okay. Now let us see whether the services are stopped or not. Yeah, all the services are stopped. So uh, you cannot uh, delete the Zookeeper directly because Zookeeper uh, HBase map reduce and high were configured uh, on top of Zookeeper before. So I have to delete all those dependent uh, dependent services also. So first I have to delete high. So if you understand the architecture, it will be pretty natural flow. If you do not understand the architecture, then it might be confusing. But if you uh, if you understand the architecture, it, uh, it will be a natural flow. So I am deleting map reduce because Hive depends on map reduce. First, I deleted Hive, then I deleted map reduce. 
HBase and MapReduce are two different things. So HBase can exist even without MapReduce. Now I am deleting uh, HBase. And now I am deleting Zookeeper. And now I am deleting HDFS. Okay. Now it is almost clean slate. And this is just a client, so it is okay. You can click on Add a Service. And first we have to configure Zookeeper. And hit Continue. And as part of the spreadsheet, sorry, as part of the Google Sheet, I want to configure uh, uh, 2, 3, and 4 as uh, Zookeeper services. So let's go back here, click on this, 2, 3, and 4 as Zookeeper. Click on OK, hit Continue. It continue. So now Zookeeper service is being started. <coughs> uh, Zookeeper is a coordinator service. Okay, and uh, uh, for uh, for any concepts like load balancer failover, etc. They need to be a coordinator service and Zookeeper plays that role in this case. So Zookeeper keeps, keeps uh, when you configure high availability on 3 and 4, Zookeeper checks uh, whether uh, uh, whether 3 is always up and running or not. Whenever 3 is down, it will trigger that failover controller service to failover to 4. So Zookeeper will keep track of all the uh, all the nodes uh, that are configured under it uh, uh, to see whether uh, what is going on in between, and it will it will force to take the necessary action. So failover is one such necessary action. When three and four are configured as active and passive, if three goes down by uh, uh, for some reason, Zookeeper always keep keeps track of it, and it will trigger failover controller service. And the failover controller service will actually uh, redirect all the traffic that is going to uh, name node on host three, uh, sorry, uh, VM three uh, to uh, name node on VM four. So it's just a hey, Durga. service. Yeah, go ahead. It's Katya, Durga. A quick question. Uh, see, uh, sometimes yeah. in production systems, I will not have the luxury uh -huh. of these uh, GUI wizard and all the stuff, right? Browser. Can I? Can I do all these functions from command line, uh, like installing or uh, starting up Zookeeper survey, HDFS, and all this stuff? No, actually, for it means uh, you you have to use some of the other distribution yeah, because you will have hundreds of the nodes in the cluster. You can do it from the command line, but it will be tedious. Uh, and uh, uh, if you if you do not, uh, there are open source. Uh, uh, Open source monitoring services as well. So, for example, Hortonworks have a tool called Ambari. Okay, and Ambari uses Chef internally, and uh, it is open source. So, you, even if, if if your company do not want to spend any money on a license of Flutter Manager, they can go for Ambari. Uh, and if they, if they want support, they can subscribe for the support of Hortonworks. Otherwise, you can use Ambari and set up your cluster for free. Okay, so you will you will use the web interfaces only to monitor uh, to set up the cluster. In the worst case, if you do not, uh, you, uh, if you are if you are, if you are at, uh, too much technical shop, in those scenarios they will use either puppet or chef to uh, to manage this. So you will have a centralized uh, uh, puppet server or uh, chef server. Where you will uh, 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 from where you will drive everything. So mm -hmm. you you need to use one or the other uh, automation or um, uh, web web based tools to to take care of this. Otherwise, it will be too much tedious. Okay. Yeah. And also, you, you see, right? Uh, you can make. Uh, Silly mistakes and it will take uh, days to troubleshoot the issue if you do it from command line. So now I configured Zookeeper and now we will start with HDFS. 
add a service HDFS and hit continue. And now it um, uh, it took Zookeeper directly. You cannot deselect it. Once you add it, you, it will uh, take uh, uh, Zookeeper. And I want to make VM03 as a name node. Uh, I will start with secondary name node, then I will change it to active passive configuration. Okay. And balancer is also 03. Uh, and data node is on uh, custom. I just want to configure data nodes on 5, 6, and 7. It's a, just a three data node cluster. And hit continue. Okay. I'm leaving all these things as default. Hit continue. So, uh, yeah, it says it will format only if HDFS is empty. We deleted the service, but we didn't clean up the data. So, HDFS will not be empty, so it will not format. So, even though you deleted the service and added the service back, uh, it will still retain the data. Okay? You can ignore it. And uh, actually, you can click on this now. Deploy client configuration. Deploy client configuration. Deploy client configuration. <coughs> Ideally, it should not have error out. It should have pass on and uh, start the other process. But for some reason, it did not. So while deploying the configuration, you can also click on this and click on start. So now we are starting the HDFS. So even if, if, if something errors out, you can ignore it for, uh, then and come to this home, home page and try starting the uh, services. Most of the time it will work. Other, if, if it does not work, then you have to troubleshoot the issue and fix the issue. Okay, it is still starting. You can monitor from here. Okay, it is done. So if you see, even though it failed in the beginning, uh, HDFS came up uh, without issues. Okay, and this canary test fails for some, uh, it will make it red for some time, but after, after a while it will be fixed. Okay, now we have the typical configuration, and now I want to change it to high availability. To change it to high availability, I have to click on the service, and, uh, and then click on instances. And uh, click on enable high availability. Okay, give the name as name service one. And uh, I want to use these two nodes. And general nodes are two, three, and four. Click OK. Hit on continue. And then okay, click on continue. So yeah, as part of the configuration. We have only uh, uh, configured active and passive and general nodes. We haven't configured failover controller. So when you actually do active and passive configuration, uh, wherever uh, on whatever nodes uh, you have configured active and passive, automatically it will uh, configure failover controller on them. So even though you do not uh, specify it explicitly, once the high availability is configured, you can say you can see failover controller on uh, uh, both the nodes VM zero three and VM zero four active and passive name nodes, and then Zookeeper will uh, keep track of these two nodes. If uh, active goes down, um, the, it will trigger the failover control on the uh, the fa uh, on the passive one, and the failover control will uh, will uh, will make the passive uh, node. An active name node, and uh, uh, things will uh, go on uh, uh, without much impact. If you don't have active and passive configuration, you have to uh, rebuild a name node uh, using the uh, FS image and then edit log. 
uh, to get to the current state, and then only, and also you have to modify all the configuration files on uh, all the slaves uh, to point to the new name nodes, and from there only it can actually uh, support the cluster. So it is starting all the services. And again, uh, if, if the name directories are not empty, this is expected to fail. Okay, by default, it will uh, it will try to format the name directories. But uh, if if they are not empty, this will fail and continue for the other ones. And if you see, it is initializing shared edits directory for of name nodes. Earlier, it is not shared edits; it's only uh, owned by the uh, one name node. So you can go through all these things, and uh, uh, most of the stuff is self-explanatory. And even if you do not understand uh, some things, I, I I I don't think it is a big issue. Most of the stuff you will be able to understand. Uh, I am not sure. I I have never tried that. Typically, these these things will be done in downtime, so uh, I don't see anyone doing that. Almost done. And also, yesterday when uh, uh, Chintan tried to access the videos, he ran into some issues. So whether you uh, have time or not, just take some time and try to download the smallest video and try to see whether you, you are able to watch it or not. Uh, so if there are too many issues, then uh, I might convert uh, them to uh, WME or MOV format and upload it uh, rather than in AR format, which is appropriate to, to WebEx. So just to validate whether you, you can uh, watch the videos uh, and let me know if you cannot. Okay, it is almost done.
so now let us review the parameters okay i am going back to our lab in aws uh, to showcase the differences between the parameters where log sorry where run so okay today it has only today's version not the earlier version okay uh, let me go to well um, yeah in this year also it has only the current one so okay let me go to uh uh everything lab only okay so let me seven okay cd well um, for the same agent process and the cell dia okay so here um here let me share the cell dia for we have fix Sixty-nine. Sixty-five. One cloud of FCM agent. So here, if you see name nodes. this one is the latest one and this one is the uh, previous one okay so let's let me show you the uh, 383 hdfs name node and if you see core side dot xml it has vm03 host 07 as the parameter okay but if you go back and see the latest one which is 395 lsltr and if you see core site it has name service one it don't have the ip address the previous one let me do uh, this one okay this 383 core site dot xml and 395 so this is the first difference between the two in the uh, uh, ip address we have the name service and uh, now if you see the difference between uh, hdfs site in both the directories there are plenty of differences so uh, so the first one is yeah there is plenty of differences and it is tough to explain uh, so let me open uh, them up okay view 395 sfs okay here if you see so now we, we as we have zoo keeper um, it uh, uh, as it is using zoo keeper this entry will be made 
uh, to tell on what all nodes zookeeper is running and then there are additional parameters with the uh, name service uh, so to configure high availability we are using the name service and uh, uh, instead of directly referring uh, uh, even if, if you see the name node name directory in the earlier configuration the parameter only looks like this and the path will be like slash dfs slash and then but here it is tagged with name service and uh, uh, the, there are, for, for this name service as we have two higher uh, two name nodes for high availability one is name node 162 and one is name node 167 uh, name node 162 yeah so uh, uh, this one uh, uh, there will be parameters for each of these uh, uh, these ones and this, this will resolve to the actual IP addresses. So in this case, uh, uh, if you if you don't have high availability configuration, the parameters will only look like this: DFS name node RPC address, DS, DFS name node uh, 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 service RPC address like that. But when you have high availability, and there will be uh, depending upon the number of nodes, I think it, it, it supports only two. So there there will be twice the number of parameters. And each one will be uh, uh, concatenated with the uh, 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 with the names that are configured as the name service one, and uh, then these will actually resolve to the actual IP addresses and the port numbers. So this is the main difference between the high availability and the uh, typical name node configuration, which which runs active, uh, which runs uh, uh, name node and secondary name node. So the main thing is uh, instead of giving the actual IP addresses. It will start with a logical name, which is called a name service one in, in this case, and uh, there will be parameters. Uh, so there, uh, it will have uh, another, uh, another logical names like name node 162 and 167, and there are set of parameters for each for each uh, ID in this, and for, uh, and then it will they will actually resolve to the actual uh, uh, IP address. So if one of the nodes goes down. What will happen is the second one will get the uh, will become the active, and it starts at the name service one, and then it will re it will look into uh, uh, whichever is active. A fail failover uh, controller service will uh, will mark which one is active and which one is not, and based upon that it will use the parameters to uh, to to work with uh, uh, to uh, to work in the cluster. So this is active passive configuration. The main thing is the um, setup, and then you should be able to understand the difference of the parameters between the uh, typical configuration and the active passive configuration. Okay, and uh, now what will be the impact on uh, uh, what will be the impact on uh, the name node web UI? So if you go back to Cloudera Manager here, if you click on Cloudera Manager, let me go to our clustering. Uh, AWS. If you click on HDFS, uh, without active passive configuration, you will only see name node web UI. Now you can see name node web UI active, name node web UI standby. You can click on uh, whatever is active at the time, and you can get, get all the uh, necessary information uh, from the name node web UI. Okay, and if you click on standby, it will just tell out. So if you click on standby. I think uh, oh, it does not have out, but uh, yeah, here I think you will see the issues. Okay. Operation category read is not supported in state standby. So if you if you make it active, then you will be able to do that. So uh, the, the role of uh, this high availability is uh, it can also use it by planned maintenance and also uh, for unplanned outages. Okay. So uh, that's how. Um, uh, that is all about uh, uh, name node high multi configuration. I think uh, even using web UI, I'm not 100% sure and I have not explored yet. You can uh, change the uh, name node status. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, you can explore it. I, I haven't explored it yet. Uh, I think using this web, web UI also, you can actually change the uh, active to standby and standby to active uh, with click on buttons. 
Okay, any questions on name node uh, uh, high availability? Okay, I'm stopping the recording and then we'll go to